Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Metropolitan Polo Club in Tianjin, China, on this bright and blustery Friday. We've got the subsidiary final of the 24 goal Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup. It's a battle of the blues with the United States will appear in dark blue, whilst Argentina will be in the light blue. I'm joined for expert polo commentary and history by Ian McDewey. Yeah, well, Tari, it's a battle of the Americas, too. Um, the United States, the, uh, the leading team, of course, in the northern part of the Americas. But Mexico uh, is very strong as well up there, and Canada not that far behind. Um, but, of course, Argentina dominates world polo, and uh, they're the most powerful nation. And... Uh, but both these teams um, getting beaten by just a goal. The first time, 14-13 was the score for the USA losing to England in extra time, golden goal. And in the, uh, in the second semi-final, it was just a goal, the difference as well. And that was scored in the last 12 seconds of the game. So it's been absolutely neck and neck polo. Uh, it's been very tough. It's been very fast. We've seen some amazing um, mid-air hitting and um and actually saw uh, mariano abregon head the ball uh, i think that soccer. was a first for paul <laughs> certainly a first for me so it's uh, it then look uh, i don't say there's no love lost between these two countries but of course the, the argentinians uh, compete quite regularly in america and so they know these players these players know one another all of these four argentinians have been playing in america this year or in the usa and uh, and of course quite a lot of the usa players go down and playing the Argentine Open. Um, Mike Azaro, who was on 10 goals, now back to eight, but he has played, I think, in five or six Argentine Opens, which is the toughest competition in the world. So Mike's had a tremendous year with Zakara winning the US Open. Yeah. Um, he's, a, he's a fantastic uh, competitor, um, very, very tough player and reads the game very well. So the Argentinian team is a, basically a team of young players, um, no old heads amongst them, but um, they go very hard. It was a tough game on Wednesday. And this is actually a repeat of the 2012 final, if I'm not mistaken, where Argentina defeated the USA. This year, again, both teams unfortunate to to lose out in their respective semi-final matches, as Ian was saying, very, very close, uh, exciting polo, golden goal on one occasion, and a, uh, I suppose, a, a penalty that was called in the dying seconds of our second semi-final. Yes, it's uh, it's it's been a very good season um, here. Um, they've had the Maserati 24 goal earlier on in June. Um, and then the InterVarsity Polo. So this is the third of the major tournaments held here at the Metropolitan Polo Club in Tianjin. And of course, it's the it's the heart or the centerpiece of um, an amazing um, development. Um, I, I, I think there's something like 30,000 people will be involved in this thing, living here and servicing it when it's completed. So the players coming on the field now anyway to play on this uh, on this polo field here. Golden Metropolitan, Argentina in the light blue with the white band. And they're followed by the American team, dark blue. And you see the numbers on the hind quarters of these horses. The, these players did not travel with their own ponies for this event. It's done by random draw, the horses that reside and play here at the Metropolitan Polo Club, divided equally and fairly amongst all four teams? Yes, they're just, they're just literally drawn out of a hat. It's, it's, a, it's a ballot and uh, um, the horses are progressively drawn out, just allocated to a team and that team then has, uh, gets to ride them in a couple of trial matches and um, they'll discard the ones they don't quite uh, get on with and they'll end up with uh, six horses to play here and a spare. And uh, here, because of the conditions, um, because it can get a bit warm, um, they have decided to split the chuckers with the horses. So each horse will play effectively half a chucker, um, and then another horse will come on the second part, and then that'll be repeated three chuckers later. So we'll be playing six chuckers in this subsidiary final. Each chucker comprised of seven minutes, with horses being changed at approximately the three and a half minute mark during each chucker. 
The two gentlemen in the middle there, you see, in the striped shirts are the umpires. The reason we have two umpires is that they effectively divide the field into diagonal halves. And the, because the angle of the ball, and now we have the national anthem for Argentina. Argentine team. I believe the Argentine ambassador is also here with us. And that will be followed by the national anthem for the United States of America. Again, if you're just joining us, we are live from Tianjin, China at the Metropolitan Polo Club for the 24-goal Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup. This is the subsidiary final, Argentina versus USA, repeat of the 2012 final. Now introducing the players from Argentina. And the number one for Argentina, Martin Pepe, on five goals. Number two for Argentina, very, very strong, tough player. He played very hard against the Hong Kong team. This is Mariano Obregón on seven goals. The number three is Michel Dorignac, also on seven goals. Very, very calm, clean hitter of the ball. Does a great job on the back end. The tall man shutting the back door in the number four position is Martin Donovan for Argentina. Now looking at the team from the United States, and at number one, we've got Thomas Collingwood, actually born in Argentina, residing in the United States. Sorry, it's Ulysses Escapite. And at number two, Nicholas Roldan, captain of the United States team that contested the recent Westchester's Cup against the United Kingdom. And number three, the captain, and at eight goals, Mike Azaro. And at number four, there we have Thomas Collingwood again, born in Argentina, but having the family move to the United States at the very tender age of five. And as they, uh, the teams proceed over to the sideboard for the ball throwing in ceremony, looks like we will be joined by Mr. Harvey Lee, vice chairman of the Golden Group and an integral part of this development, including the, the Metropolitan Polo Club. And there's Harvey Lee again who will start uh, start this game yeah two umpires today are Peter Wright from England and Steve Evans from South Africa so both neutral umpires and the referee Daniel Badu 
I think they've had a very challenging role at times thus that's far in the tournament. Great. It's been very, very close, very tough ball, some, some tough decisions, but that's the umpire's job. So the two teams lining up. Argentina on the left, USA on the right, and Harvey Lee throws the ball in and it bounces out on the USA side. Picked up there by Mike Azaro, who looks to just tuck the ball around. No, he's going to go under the neck from there. Plays a long shot. Uh, Doroniak gets his pony in the way. Azaro hooks him out of the next shot, though, and Azaro will take it forward again for the USA. Up over the halfway line this time. Now drives it down to the scoring zone. Looking for Thomas Collingwood, who's up there in front. Goes on the near side, running it up towards goal. Big angle shot from here. It's one goal to the year. No, it's not. A beautiful save there by Martin Donovan. And picking up now, Mariano Obregón brings it up into the corner. Just runs it up along the boards. It doesn't get a lot of distance on this one. So under the neck goes Escapite. He brings it down in front of goal. Collingwood up there once again. Gets another shot at goal. This time Mazzara goes in. Oh, I think it was Nick Rolden who came in there and the umpires have blown the whistle. I started to explain before about the angle and the line of the ball. The direction in which the ball is travelling establishes a right of way about a metre wide. And uh, if a player is coming, you just see here... Collingwood went across, played the ball. Now coming in there was Mike Zara, I think it was, who just pushed the ball under the neck. Now that he turns his horse across the front of the Argentine player. That can possibly cause a collision. That's an infringement and a penalty shot is awarded. In this case, it's a hit on the spot that brings the ball up to the 60 yard line. It bounces there off. Donovan's pony, he brings it along the line. Now Obregon is in there now, but uh, in comes Pepe. But it's going to be picked up here by Escapite bringing the ball through. Now in comes Obregon. Tries to clear the ball for Argentina, but he can't get to it. It's uh, Nick Roldan, I think, got uh, a, a stick to that ball. Drove it in towards the goal. And just coming off the boards now, Mike Azaro turns the ball around for USA. Tries to get possession, but it's stolen there by Martin Donovan now. And out of the ruck comes Obregón. Obregón, Mariano Obregón down over the halfway line. Here's Argentina right on the attack now. Obregón brings the ball down to about the 40-yard line, checks the pony back. Oh, and he's shafted it. It's gone up high, and it'll be taken away there now by Nick Roldan, who doesn't get on to the next shot, though. So coming in again, this time it's Pepe. Pepe brings the ball up to goal. Argentina, the pony virtually kicks it through. And the first score will go to the men in light blue. Argentina, one goal. And as we spoke earlier, I think I was anticipating a bit, a bit more open play. And a lot of scoring, unlike the defensive scrum that we saw from Argentina during their match with Hong Kong, China. Yeah, well, they're, they're, very, they're very good at switching the game from here we go, just watching on the replay here. And it, it had rolled through um, Martin Pepe. First score on the board. 427 into our first chucker. Uh, now it's out of the ruck. It's swung back there by Mike Azara, but it runs into a bit of traffic. So in comes Pepper once again. His little backhand shot is met by Nick Roldan. Roldan drives the ball out for Mike Azara. Doesn't quite come to him. Collingwood comes through. But diving in there now, it's um, Michel Dorignac. Dorignac brings the ball down to the left of the centre. Argentina on the attack again. Roldan with the backhand shot. Takes it out to the boards. It bounces back in play. Escapite is there. He puts the ball over the sideline, I think so. We'll see Steve Evans throw it in. Like Thomas Collingwood was lucky to stay on his pony on that occasion. <laughs> they come up, uh, the ponies aren't watching the boards, and then suddenly they appear in their sight. And they can prop anyway. It's gone right through the ruck this time, and it's going to be Azaro picking it up for the USA. He just dribbles the ball back now, finds a bit of clean air ground, and pushing it forward. He's looking for Nick Roldan, but it's not going to come up to him. So Mike Azaro comes in. Now he dribbles it back to Roldan, but diving in there was. Um, Donovan, but it's backed out by Escapito, who's put it up to Collingwood now, and uh, Collingwood brings it down for the USA. He's had a couple of cracks at goal, didn't get that one. Now it's pushed forward there by uh, Azaro. Azaro shot cleaned up by Michelle Doroniak. Beautiful defensive play by the Argentinians. In comes Nick Roldan. He elects to go out to the boards with a try and find a new line, bring it into the centre, give him a bit of wider goal to hit at. 
He taps it back now for Collingwood. No, he goes himself. Chopped out of the ball. Picked up there by Zara. Zara brings it around the corner. Now Zara brings it into centre field. He's only got uh, Doronyak to get past. He hits it a bit too hard, though. Doronyak's there. And the backhand by Doronyak has come off uh, Zara's stick and gone through the goal. Well, Mike Zara just overhit that a little bit. It had gone past the... the but uh, he saw Azara going for the backhand, put his stick down, and uh, and uh, that'll be one of the most amazing goals he scored in his long career. Indeed, indicative of his eight goal handicap. Well, former ten goal standing. So uh, the players go off to change hands. Here we go now. You'll see Azara bringing the ball across field, just running it up to goal. That was just a little bit too hard. He'd gone out to the right, puts his stick down, and as the backhand shot is hit, he gets his stick in the way and bangs it through at right angle. So, uh, well angles it through and uh, all square after about four minutes of this chucker and we're at the halfway mark and again it's, the players will be changing ponies halfway through each chucker six chuckers to be played today in this subsidiary final tomorrow we'll be broadcasting live again from the metropolitan polo club in tianjin where we will be showing you the final featuring England versus Hong Kong, China. Fisher Brothers facing each other in the final. So we'll come back to the centre, which we do after each goal is scored. And that's just so that any wind or where, if it is raining um, isn't blowing in the horse's faces for a hull chucker. They get it at the tail for at least half of it or on average. Now you see Collingwood coming out of the ruck there. And uh, Donovan, I think it was, yes, uh, just looked like leaning Donovan. across to uh, to try and get the backhand in, and of course it's uh, it's come. Yeah, Tori, you were I saying. think Donovan was well aware of his infringement. <laughs> yes, yes, he didn't. He didn't argue about that one. You, I said the safety. One of the other things is playing playing a shot that may go across a horse's legs, because if you trip a horse up, that's uh, obviously a very bad end to a play. And uh, Nick Roldair is happy to take the ball down to the 60-yard line and for the first real goal-scoring penalty opportunity. We saw a penalty from Argentina earlier in the chuck, but it was on the spot in front of their own goal. But this one now is 60 yards out. This enables the defending team to come out in front of the goal and uh, put their horses and their sticks in the way. So you've not only got to get the ball through the goal, if you hit it along the ground, you've got to avoid 16 legs and four sticks. And Nicholas Roldan playing in the number two position, the forward position. He's missing a number on the back of his jersey there, but easily identified. So in he comes now and puts the ball down the ground and it's met and uh, turned around there by Escapite but to picked up now by Obrigon who brings the ball up to the halfway line. Now it's turned back there by Mike Azaro. Azaro's shot's going to be picked up by Thomas Collingwood. Collingwood goes around the corner with it and if you do that, you've got to make sure there's nobody coming. And Martin Pepper was coming straight down the old line of the ball. So if you tap the ball across in front of the player coming down, you've got to make sure you've got heaps of room to get out of the way. On that occasion, the umpire said he didn't. And so they will award a penalty this time to Argentina. There's the backhand shot. We saw now this is Collingwood going around the corner. See Pepe coming down the line there, holding his stick in the air. He was going fast too, so. The Argentine players are very clever like that, actually forcing you into the penalty. Yeah, they place a lot of polo, they play all grades, and they read the game very quickly and read the plays. And so if there's any chance of them forcing a, a foul, they'll, uh, they'll grab it. Because in reality, Pepe didn't actually have a play on the ball. He was... <laughs> It was in the possession of, of uh, Escapite. Yes, but Escapite in turning the ball has come into his right of way. And so it's um, if, if he has to check his horse up, anything that's intimidating, um, that's a penalty. Like Obregano is going to take the hit for Argentina on a pretty thick set chestnut pony. Leans into it and drives it down 
to the goal mouth area, but there's been a whistle. Like, looks like that's been called on Martin Donovan. The United States to take possession. Yes, take it. Ball has been placed for. Yeah, Mike Azar was coming out to defend that, and uh, and the Argentine flag took it on the wrong side of his horse. So it's put in by Mike Azar. Now brings it up over the 60-yard line. Nick Roldan's there to pick the pass up. Brings it up over the halfway. He'll try and cut it in towards goal from here, but doesn't get hold of it. First one to it is going to be Martin Pepper, who takes the ball down along. Well, he's elected to put it over the sideline, I think. Over the sideboards. <laughs> yeah. And in doing so, knocked the head off his stick. So he, I'm not sure he intentionally put it over the sideline. <laughs> Obviously, you have got a head on the stick. You're not going to get the next hit. But he's uh, not given time off. So the ball goes into play and Zara comes out with it. And he'll push the ball down towards the goal. He's just looking for a dribble shot here. Hooked out of it by uh, Doran Yakman. Coming through is Escapite. And he'll put the goal through. So that pushes the United States now. Out into the lead by two goals to one. And Escapite was quite a, uh, a silent player in that earlier, yeah. earlier match. There you he see Azara's lovely near side shot. He couldn't get to it, but coming through, Escapite could, and he just dribbles the ball through, not trying to overhit it. Clever play. There's Azara again on the near side, bounces up high and backwards for him. He just couldn't quite get a stick to it, but in came Escapite, and he only needed one shot to get it through the goal. So we're back in play now, and uh, it's come out on the USA side, Argentina on the attack here. Martin Donovan with the ball, gets a bump from Mike Azaro, who now gets the near side backhand shot in, but he's put it up in front of goal. Roldan comes out of the ruck for USA, and he's just uh, galloped himself into the clear here a little bit, trying to keep control, knocking it off the line, but it's gone out to the right, and that's put him in an awkward position now. He's got a difficult angled shot wherever he goes from here, but he makes the most of that. That's a cracker of a shot, drops it down into the scoring zone, certainly. In comes Escapito once again, he's just got a goal. In comes Pepe, and Pepe takes the ball away out to the boards and gets Argentina out of a heap of trouble. He and Escapito riding hard for the ball, Escapito's backhand. Now, uh, there goes the bell for the first, uh, the first bell, and the ball rolls over the back line, so. We'll see a second chucker start with a hit in from the back line. Nice flowing play in this first, in the subsidiary final of the Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup. It's quite a clever play, the, the subtleties that we've been talking out all week, controlling the ball. But we're going to take a short break. We'll return for the second chucker with the United States leading Argentina 2-1. Again, you're with yeah. Sports, Fortune Heights, Super Editions Cup. And welcome back to Now Sports, our live coverage of the Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup in Tianjin, China. I'm Tori Dorsey, joined in the studio by Ian McDewey with the USA leading Argentina by two goals to one. We're just starting our second chucker in this six chucker subsidiary final. Yeah, interesting stage. I think uh, probably the USA have decided to play it a bit differently than they did against um, England. In that game, they they relied very much on the combination of Vizarro and Roldan. Uh, we're seeing Thomas Collingwood and Escapita into the game very early today. So they've watched the way the Argentinians played yesterday and know that they tend to bottle it up in the centre. So they're pushing it out and allowing the men at either end to hit. Anyway, it's been hidden from the back line by Argentina to start the second chucker. And they've brought it up to the halfway line now, but uh, it's taken 
out of play there by Nick Roldan, but he can't come in on that one. So it's Pepe who puts the ball back for Obregon to bring the ball out to the sideline. He'll go for the next shot too, I think. No, he's, he's called his number four man in there, and that's Donovan. He's gone up the front. He's looking for Pepe to give him the lead to goal. Here comes Obregon now with the big hit. He puts it high in the air, and it's going to roll just wide to the right. Nick Roldan was worried about that one, pulled the whip, but he uh, need not have because it's gone behind, and so Donovan will hit in for Argentina. See the communication amongst the Argentine players creating a train just behind the ball following one another. it's USA to hit in and Mike Azara takes it this time uh, it's, it's got it up to Roldan but Roldan wasn't able to pick the ball up so turning quickly now is Dorignac and uh, no sorry it's Obregon but Dorignac coming through um, Argentine appealing for a penalty but it's been turned around by the USA Pepper goes across he thinks he's got the line there but in comes Mike Azaro. So they're playing tough guys out on the boards. Finally, it's Dorignac who cleans the ball up for Argentina. He'll bring it in towards goal now. Running it in nicely. Back in defence there is Escapito, but he can't stop him. And Obregon, uh, Dorignac will put the ball wide. Well, just wide to the right of the post, it looked like. Yep. And, uh, he, uh, he did get a big bump from Ulysses Escapito on the way through, so that probably just threw him off the shot a little, and he's put a bit of angle on it, so. Mike Azaro taking the hit-ins for USA. Now he brings it across the left. He and Roldan had this worked out pretty well on their first match, and they seem to have got that combination going again. Nick Roldan unloads, doesn't come up to Escapito. Oh, yes, it does, it bounces, and then Escapito is able to draw back on it, but he's taken off the ball there by Obregon. And now he comes back in, in comes Mike Azaro, now steals it away while those two are fighting for it. Obrigo, though, gets the next one in. And it's a backhand out towards the sideline. Roll downs there for USA. Puts in, picked up by Dorignac. Obrigo comes through once again. And uh, here he comes through to pick up the... Ball for Argentina, runs it into centre field. It bounces a little awkwardly for him and allows Mike Azaro to come in and hit a backhand, but that's hit a pony. And Obregon's out in front now. But, uh, doesn't come up to him. Picked up there by Donovan, but uh, the ball hits a pony, taken away by Nick Roldan. Roldan just dribbling the ball. Great stick work by the USA number two. And eventually the bouncing ball beats him. But following through is Escapite now. Collingwood, I think, comes through. Or was it Collingwood early? Anyway, it's, it was Escapito hit at that time. But anyway, it's bounced off a pony and come back. So, Dorignac again with an approach shot to goal. Can he get this one through? It bounces off. Collingwood's pony goes out towards the sideline. Roldan's there. So are the umpires, and they have blown the whistle. Looks like they're blowing to the, the halfway point of this chuck. No, was there a penalty off the ball? Yeah, I don't think they'd just blow a whistle just to call halfway. Uh, there's been a penalty there. And I can see in that hook in the replay where that's going to be a difficult one to decide because I think the hook was okay. It's quite illegal to hook another player's stick. But then once you've done that hook, you can't turn across in front because the ball hasn't moved onto a new line. And so if you stop the player, and they're almost at a standstill. Just coming in here, you see... That was Dorignac's shot. And this ball has started to pop a little bit. There are a few divots on this ground. Dorignac tries to keep the ball in play. Uh, that was the one he missed, but this is Escapite coming through. And Obregon hits the backhand. They've also taken an opportunity during that uh, during that period. Now the, the players are indeed changing ponies for the second half of this second chucker. Assuming they will then resume back where the penalty was called. 
Mike Gazzaro having uh, words with the USA manager at this point. Some strategic conversation about, <laughs> about the game thus far. We noticed that Mike Gazzaro and Nick Roldan combination during the uh, subsidiary, well, the semi-final, but now it looks like they're just allowing Ulysses Escadite to escape downfield and feeding him the ball. Yes, well, you would expect that Argentina would have had some tactics to try and bottle the uh, Zaro roll down combination up a little bit. And uh, so they figured that if they're going to be have a man camped on them, that'll give Escapito the opportunity to come up into the game. And he's been, well, he's had two or three scoring opportunities from the back. So the Argentinian side pretty much playing it the way they were uh, against Hong Kong, China allowing Obregon to do a lot of the heavy work in the centre and um, Dorignac coming through from the three position as the main attack player. Okay. Steve Evans bringing the ball back into play here. So he calls them to get into some sort of reasonable line now he puts the ball in and it bounces out on the usa side pepe tries to pick it up for argentina but it comes out to collingwood but then it's turned around by obrigon and the whistle blows so obviously there wasn't a penalty down there before they just threw it in or they decided there wasn't a penalty even though the whistle may have blown but there's definitely a penalty being awarded here some debate again words with the referee and the American team there the four of them actually so Steve Evans just coming in and having a word and this is the subsidiary final the 24 goal fortune Heights Super Nations Cup England to face Hong Kong, China in tomorrow's final live on Now Sports. So here goes the penalty hit, and you'll uh, you'll see two players coming in on the left-hand side of your screen. There, that's Collingwood and Donovan, and they know that uh, the USA is probably going to try and hit up hard, and that's what they've done. The shot goes up to Nick Roldan, but. It's defended there by Dorignac, but Roldan pulls the pony back and then just bumps him and dives in and pops the ball. And that's a beautiful goal from America. It was well constructed, as I said. You saw um, Collingwood go really deep, which dragged a man out of the game. And then Roldan just came back to avoid the hook and the angled shot under the pony's neck puts the ball straight through the goal. And so the USA push out now to a two goal lead. They lead Argentina by three goals to one. So we're back in centre field. Pyre Evans puts the ball in. Dorignac is hooked out of the next play, but it's picked up there by Donovan. Now coming through to the ball is Dorignac, and he leans out the back, and he plays it on the near side, but he's hooked out of it by Collingwood. It's picked up there by Obrigon, but now Escapita again coming into the game, puts the ball out along the boards, and back in defence goes Mariano Obregón. Obregón's there, but so is Roldo. Roldo's there in time to play it on the near side. And then he puts the ball back down into the corner. Now he's got a long run into goal from here, and Obregón hasn't let him go. He's got out two lengths clear of him, and he's happy to watch that one roll over the back line just to the left of the post. So it will be USA to hit in from the back. Argentina need goals now, though. They're, we're well into the second chucker, and they're trailing by two. This is not going to be a high-scoring game because, uh, although we thought it might be, Tori, a, a galloping sort of hitting game, they're, they're, they're playing it just as tough as before. They are indeed, and that one over the boards. And we take our next break. It's very subtle for determining who actually has the, the line, and we'll pick your brains about that in a moment. So, ball's put in play by the umpire, and it's backed in there by Michel Dorignac. Again, it's S. Obregon trying to hassle them out of it, but it's finally Dorignac once again. He's playing a bit of a waiting game, sitting out the back a little deeper here now. 
Obregon has to come in and help him because the ball's left sitting there, but finally Dorignac drives the ball out towards the sideline. Covering it there was Escapite, but he doesn't get the backhand in. So now Argentina with a big chance. Up over the halfway line, that goes Donovan, I think, has come through from the back here. And he'll, that's pushed backwards by Mike Cazaro. And, uh, oh, big hit there. But, um, yes, the umpires will blow the whistle. And uh, Mariano, what we got? And Ulysses Escapite. Look like a clash of titans there. <laughs> well, we were talking about the line of the ball before, and if we get this one on replay, it'll be a very good example of, of the angles that are involved. But uh, looks like we're going to go straight to the penalty. So, well, the question was particularly when there's a, literally a horse race between the two players. Obviously, one gets the head of his pony out in front of the other, and does that actually give them then possession? Possession. Well, I was going to say that's um, that's that's where the angles matter because it doesn't matter even if you've hit the ball. Um, if there's another player coming parallel to you and you turn off your line, that's a penalty as well. So when two horses clash like that, coming at angles, and uh, the umpires will say, no, you still, even though you may have been the last man to hit the ball, you've given up your right to hit the next one because you've come across the front of a man coming up that line. So. It's, um, it's, it, it may sound very subtle, but I guess when you're out there, it, uh, it, uh, it, it's pretty obvious if, uh, if somebody is infringed. So a nice, soft penalty hit there for Argentina. Brings the score back to three goals to two. Mariano. See, uh, contrary to my belief, after... Uh, almost two chuckers. We we're only at five goals on the board when I thought we would see far more. But again, and there's the yeah, well, there's the bell to end the second chucker. And uh, interesting situation. I think Argentina um, would be happy to get that penalty goal at the end because they weren't getting too close. I mean, Dorinyak had a number of attacking runs in that chucker, but he just wasn't able to convert it. But that's not because he's playing badly. It's because the USA defence is so strong that he's not getting clean hits the ball, so he's having to rush his shots a little bit and gets the angles. So we're leaving you now. We'll be back after just a short break with the USA leading Argentina. Welcome back to the Metropolitan Polo Club in Tianjin. We're here for the Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup 24 goal polo and a battle of the blues here in the subsidiary final. At the end of two chuckers, we have the United States leading Argentina by a score of three to two. Yeah, interesting uh, situations. Argentina getting back into the game by uh, coming back to just a one goal difference, which means that psychologic they're, they're okay so they'll hit it in here now it's just be interesting to see whether Argentina tries to bring the ball up the side of the field rather than the center it's turned around there by Martin Pepper and the umpires are blowing the whistle now again um, Corey I don't know if we can get a replay to the United States. Mike Azaro marking the ball. Or actually, Nicholas Roldan. Nicholas Roldan preparing to take this 60-yarder. The Argentines crowding in the goal mount to defend. Yes, the defending team able to come out to 30 yards. You see that uh, line there now. It's beautifully hit there by 
Mike Gazzaro, and I think he's put it through. Or was it Nick? Yeah, it was Nick. Um, Nick, Nick Roldan. Yes. So USA push themselves out. Four goals to two. Start this third chucker with an immediate goal from the United States. And the ball goes back into play again. This is the subsidiary final. Super Nations Cup. Metropolitan Polo Cup in Tianjin. These teams playing for third and fourth place. Final tomorrow between England and Hong Kong, China. So down the field. USA again. No, it's picked up by Argentina this time, and uh, but against eventually, Mike Azara gets the near side backhand in. It's backed out there. By Donovan, and the ball is just getting a bit messy on that side of the field, and umpires blow the whistle, and I think. Um, again, conversation about who has actually committed the foul. Umpire is certainly being kept busy between these two teams. I suppose as the standard of play improves, it's uh, the, the the penalties become a bit more subtle, harder to read. Yeah, um, and you know, that's that's way on the other side of the field there was about five players so we won't try and preempt it but the umpires having a bit of a discussion uh, but then eventually steve evans calling the players in so they decided that no foul had occurred and they'll throw the ball in towards the sideline so that they said we have two umpires they watch the game from different angles and uh, that allows them to see the the angle the players are coming from and where the line of the ball is. One umpire might think there's room to move, another umpire doesn't. And if they can't be definite about it, or if one umpire says, no, definitely from my point of view, that was not at all. Oh, it's up in front of goal. It's rolled through. So... Uh, a goal for Argentina. So back to a goal, the difference. Argentina pulls the score back to four to three. So here we see it was... Collingwood was there. Now that's uh, Obregon. I think um, plays the ball back. That was a very Barone. clever shot. Yeah, well, but it was a. He must have had eyes in the back of his head to hit that one. So goal off the pony of Ulysses Escapite. So Collingwood brings the ball out of the ruck for USA. It's turned around by Donovan. Then picking it up is Nick Roll now. He's put it down along the sideline. He's got a uh, nice lead from Thomas Collingwood, but Doroniak's going to stay with him. And it's just tapped back there by Martin Pepper, but uh, Roldan's around in time to take the ball into centre field. Now, this opens the goals up a bit for him. Has he got anybody up there? Collingwood's come back to just make sure he's got a man covered, and he'll try and take him out. Backhand shot by Pepper. And uh, again, if we can see. I believe that was Thomas Collingwood that was uh, called for the infringement. Foul, thank you. Here we are, that was Roldan coming through there. Now you see, and what's happened there, I think, is that Pepper, in coming through, he's actually ridden Collingwood into the line of the play. Now you can't do that when you're riding a man off. And not only did that, but he left him alone and then played a backhand. So, so uh, but I think the foul had actually occurred prior to him playing the shot. Pepper forced his own teammate into the. No, uh, Pepper took one of the opposition team across into the right away, and and you know that's just as dangerous as going in there yourself. So. So the penalty is taken by Nick Rolda, and it's through the goal, and so America push out again to a two-goal lead. They lead the Argentinian side by five goals to three. States just keeping that two goal, keeping their head just just ahead of Argentina in this match. It looks like they're going to stop and change ponies now at the 358 mark of this third chucker. Again, horse welfare, utmost um, priority 
Yes, and this is this is probably the warmest, most humid day we've had, uh, which is the horses don't like it much. They do tire quickly when they start to sweat up a lot. So here we have just a replay of that, that shot that was missed, and then the tap. And that was the, I think that was the Dorinyak backhand. This was Mike Azaro's, and Roldan couldn't get that. So this is where we saw the throw in. Obregon played the backhand shot. Right. It goes down. In front of Dorinyak once again now. We've got again. Faints for the backhand, then goes forehand. Mike Azaro coming around on the inside of the turn. Gets to Obregon, but Obregon just manages to get his stick to the ball. And great stick work there, but not able to control the final shot. Pony kicks it and knocks it over the back line. So we're back in play now. Um, with the players back on the field for the rest of this third chucker, heading up for the halfway mark in this subsidiary final Super Nations Cup in Tianjin, China, 2013. Got a growing crowd here at the Metropolitan Polo Club. A beautiful day in Tianjin. A lot of anticipation for that final tomorrow between England and Hong Kong, China. So the ball's through the ruck right uh, to the back. It's Michel Dorignac who uh, takes it forward, but it's trapped by Mike Azaro, who then hits a backhand. Collingwood's out there chasing this one hard. He's got uh, Donovan out of the way, so it allows Nick Roldan to come through now and cut the ball in towards centre field. Escapide coming hard to it, but so is Dorinyak. He gets a little backhand shot. Roldan now following through is Mike Azaro. Azaro pushing it up towards goal. Azaro takes it out to the right-hand side. Angled shot from here. Goal, Mike Azaro. So every time Argentina responds, <laughs> the United States counters with another goal. Yeah, well, they've pushed it out to three goals. And here's Azaro. He's got great control. Again, just hitting it far enough. And that's a difficult shot for 99 out of 100 players. But Mike Azaro's played this sort of polo a lot. And he just knew he had the room there to play the angle. Probably anyway out of the ruck, it's Thomas Collingwood. But the ball runs into a bit of traffic picked up there by Dorin Yang. He'll take the ball down to uh, neither gets actually Opera anyway. It's stolen by Thomas Collingwood. Now uh, picked up there by Ulysses. And uh, now finally stolen again by Argentina. But out of the ruck now, here comes Collingwood for the USA. He takes it down on the near side. Now cuts under the pony's neck. And he'll just look for a little cut shot on the day. He doesn't get that one. It's taken away by Nick Rolden. And he's got it out on the boards. He's hard ridden by Obregon. Waiting for the ball to come away from the pony's tail now. He just keeps control of it. Well, Nick Rold, he's using up a bit of time, but he's got a clean shot at the ball finally, but he had to rush that a little. He's put it way out to the left of centre, and it will be picked up by Martin Donovan, who brings it out to the boards. Gets the next shot in. Doesn't get a lot of length on it. So it's left sitting there now for Michelle Donignac to bring the ball up. It's covered there. by Escapite, but his shot runs into Pony, so he has to have another go at it. Ooh, when that, that one hit, uh, hit out of the field of play and then actually into the spectators. Yes, Collingwood there just had his eye on the ball and overhit it a little. So we'll see a throw in from the sideline. In it goes. Comes out on the Argentine side and is going to be picked up there by Nick Rolder. And... Uh, he and Mike Azaro going hard to the ball. dorignac has got Azaro tied up, so Roldan takes the ball down to the 30-yard line. He's got an angled shot from here. Pops it up, looking to cut it. Oh, great defensive play. But, uh, oh, yeah, taken out eventually. Um, right out of harm's way by Obregon. Now turned back in there by Collingwood. Collingwood shot bounces off a pony. Umpires watching players coming from various directions. And blow the whistle. 
just taken right off the line by Argentina. Here we go. You watch this. this Goal down there. Great saving play by the Argentinians. The first backhand got backspin on it. In came another one. And uh, I think it was finally Dorinac who got it, but uh, anyway, they got them out of a lot of trouble. So not only did they clear it off the, the call line, but mouth, but in USA desperately trying to get it back up there have come across the ball. Now that was at speed, and the umpires have, rather than a hit on the spot this time, they've taken it back up to the halfway. So it's a relatively severe penalty. that's awarded on the well, safety of the player and the, the pony or when you say severe well if if it's if they're traveling at low speed and it's technically a player comes across the line or comes in at a wrong angle and even if there was a collision it wouldn't probably be um, very dangerous collision but when two players are playing at speed and they come across the line that's potentially a very bad collision so it's a, it's a bit more the umpires jump on that a, a bit more. Anyway, it's Argentina have hit the ball in, and it's trapped by Nick Rolder, who gets another shot at the ball. Now he picks it up on the half volley, but he gets a big bump. And, well, it was Pepper in there. Obregon was coming through. Whistle has blown. So you see Nick Rolder there. He looks pretty happy. He thinks he's got the whistle going his way. You see, here he came. He comes for the ball. Um, not sure about that one. I'll leave that to the umpires because we saw it from the side, not from the the uh, backhand. But I think what they've said is that Nick rolled out in playing on that side of the horse in front of the <laughs> horse's legs. Certainly after the whistle, Mariano Obregón had a little bit of a celebratory gallop. So... Uh, umpires now that's what i was saying there you see that wasn't that wasn't particularly um, but, uh, changing uh, there was a change of ponies 13 seconds left in this third chucker united states leading argentina six three in this subsidiary final again you're watching highest goal polo in asia metropolitan polo club fortune heights super nations cup bringing some of the best players in the world to china yeah you know i saying there this time they've uh, awarded a hit on the spot because those players coming up the line they weren't traveling all that fast they've been slowing down to hit the ball so playing across the on the wrong side, it's a free hit, but they're not going to take it all the way up to the halfway. So the severity of the, the penalty is really to protect the interest of the, the players and the horses to some extent. It's, it's also to to remind players that when you're travelling fast, you've got to be a little bit more careful. To send to heed of warning. Yes. <laughs> so Mike Azaro and uh, Nick Rolden, you see, talking there. Just having a bit of a discussion. They'd be pretty happy with the score, I'm sure. It's heading up with about 13 seconds left, and they're leading by three goals. And they're double the score of Argentina on six goals to three. And they seem to have found uh, an answer to, uh, well, here's another shot of that play with Obregon earlier. As we saw, where he brought the ball to the back line. Then that's that great clearing play by Zara. Nick Rolder here. Here we, we come. We didn't get an opportunity to see the stick work of these players. Yes, in these replays, you see how they keep their heads down. There, um, back of the pony lines. So they're attacking up a, a new horse or some broken tack from one of the Argentinian players. There, not quite visible from behind the pony. It's again a bit of a replay. That was uh, earlier in the chucker. Mariano Obregon, which really when he tried to attack. And again, it looks like we just have a short, uh, short delay in play. They're addressing some 
horse issues with one of the Argentine players. Still in a pony line, either repairing to attack on that pony. And there he is uh, returning to the field of play, Mariano Obregón. So again, we have just 13 seconds remaining in this third chaka. We'll be taking a short break between the third and fourth chaka when guests in attendance are invited out to stomp divots on the field to replace the small holes that may have been kicked up by the ponies. Yes, Mariano's returned on a pony called Morphine. So whether he can deaden this American attack or not, I'm not sure, but uh, it's Argentina on the attack. They take the penalty. The Americans come in and try and block the ball. The umpires blow the whistle. Well, that was a, that was a very strong penalty shot. There's there's a zone up in front of the goal there where if you get the ball into there on your stick side, it's terribly hard to, to prevent a man from scoring. And, and I think uh, USA could see that that's exactly where the Argentine hit was going. So they desperately try and defend it. And of course, in, in doing so, they've come across the line. And so really big chance now for Argentina with three seconds to go. They'll go down for an open goal penalty. See Mike Azaro just uh, confirming the situation with, I think it was umpire Peter Wright. Dying seconds of this third chucker. Trying to bring it back to just a two goal deficit. Well, Gazzaro, they have to, they can't come out through the goal mouth, they can't cross the line before the ball is struck, so. Mariano Obregón back to take this penalty hit for Argentina. Open goal, comes in, swings the stick over, gives it plenty of air and it's through the middle so we'll finish the third chuck of the halfway mark. We've got a little break coming up with USA on six goals and Argentina trailing by two on four so still anybody's game with three chuckers to go. Indeed it has not been a the high scoring game that we anticipated but nonetheless i think we're seeing a lot more open play today than we have seen over the last two days yeah it's um it's uh interesting i said argentina were basics playing the same tactics earlier they, they've amped it up a bit but still behind two there you see our score line united states leading argentina six to four Back to the Metropolitan Polo Club in Tianjin. Got a nice aerial shot of the uh, the tournament site, the Super Nations cover. Just taking through you through some highlights of the first three chuckers of the subsidiary final. Yeah, that was Harvey Lee throwing in, and this is uh, what we expected that in the center of the USA would think. But Roland hit uh, a big shot there rather than waiting for Zaro to come with him, and uh, that's how they started to go, try and get it up to Collingwood early. Um, Argentina's very, very quick to pinch the ball back if uh, it goes offline or doesn't reach a player coming through. And um, this was the play by Martin Donovan, who um, just didn't quite get to goal. And Roldan was able to clean the ball away, but he couldn't get the next shot in. So Argentina going back now. Hooked out of the play, but it still bounced up in time and it got through. And Martin Pepper it was actually and, uh, so we saw a lot of yeah yeah we saw a lot of uh, a lot of that close sort of play with hooking um, the goals were hard to come by we're not seeing a lot of goals being scored um, with big open runs down the field it's been this sort of play where it gets a bit messy and then that was that one that last one by Azaro where in a play where I don't even expect him to get the ball, and then as soon as he did, he was able to uh, come through in the right position. Roll down again. That was another typical shot under pressure. They're having to play a lot of angled shots. There's no easy goals in this game. There's your 60 yard penalty. Yeah, nice conversion of a penalty, but it's, uh, it's very, very close and tight. And, uh, you know, 10 goals in the first half. What did we see? 27 goals in the first game. Um, well, we can still see that if it opens up in this, this second part. Did roll down that time, putting the penalty through. 
is another one with Lazaro. You see, they're having to push the ball through the opposition. And these goals are being scored um, by players having to run the ball across rather than run the ball through the goal. You really see Mike, the, the class of Mike Lazaro at the yeah, highest handicap player again, here. And he just, that was that. So these angled shots have been feature, well, I'd say a feature because it's, it's probably not as exciting as the ones where they run down the field and score, but even here with Nick Rolands, he just couldn't get over quickly enough to get some pressure on that ball. Argentina able through uh, Robert Gong and Donovan to clean the ball up in the goal mouth. There's another, that's the same one again. You see the backspin on the ball, here comes Donovan, clears the ball away. Then the open goal penalty for Argentina that brought it back to four goals. So the high and dry, impossible to defend. So again, we will take a short break, return for more polo at the Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup. Of the polo power people here in Tianjin this weekend. Yeah, sure. The Federation Internationale de Polo, FIP, as it's known in the polo community. Um, it, this is an officially sanctioned FIP tournament, so it has uh, international recognition. And of course, the, uh, the members of the FIP Executive Council will be here. Well, quite a few of them already here, but uh, most of them will be here tomorrow for the final. Looks like we will resume action to start the fourth chucker. The throw in at uh, midfield. There it goes, and it uh, comes out amongst the, the number threes, and the first one is the USA number three, Mike Azaro, whose shot hits a pony's foot and bounces out to the right. Diving hard to it there, I think, is Pepe. Nick Rolden's out the back in defence for the USA, and it's Escapita, I think, trying to get onto that ball, but he can't do so, and it's going to be left here for Argentina to clear it in the form of Michelle Dorignac, who takes it out to the left-hand side, running along the boards now. He's just got a little bit of clear of Tom Collingwood, takes it now on the near side, runs the ball down over the 60-yard line, galloping it in towards goal, can't get the next shot in, but coming through Obregon, no. And uh, Donovan back there in defence, because the ball's rolling back up the boards. Mike Azaro, Nick Roldan, Coming through, Azara says, you ride on, I'll hit it to you. But he doesn't get onto it, and uh, it's a backhand there by Obregon. And Dorignac's on the end of that pass. And he'll take the ball again now. Here's a nice running, attacking play by Argentina. He's got three or four legs clear of the field. And he's um, got his go, but he's not going to stop that one. That's a lovely goal from Michel Dorignac. Well... Tori, that's one of the first of the sort of goals I think you and I are expecting in this game, where uh, a galloping hard game, and, and he's a wonderful hitter of the ball, Dorignac. He's very, very accurate, and look at that. He just plonks it in front of the goal, taps it through, and so Argentina pull it back to just a goal of difference now, 6-5. Could that be an, an inkling of what we might see in the second half? Looks like we're starting to open up play here. And so right through the ruck it goes, and it's picked up again by Dorignac. Mike Azaro back in defence, riding hard to it, but coming through is Pepe. And Pepe's shot is going to go down to the goal, but it won't be any good because the whistle blew as he took that shot. You really, as the, the viewers, I'm sure they can pick up some of those thundering hooves. You really get a, a sense of the the excitement that this game brings and, and the danger as well 500 kg animals at 35 40 kilometers an hour it looks like we have a uh, penalty or actually no yes. it's a hit on the spot anyway to the usa and uh, you saw um, martin pepper come into he saw the goal in front there and dived in but uh, Azaro had the line, so he's been given a free hit. It comes off Obregon's pony, but Mike Azaro will get possession when the ball bounces back. Now he's brought it around past two Argentinian players. He's on his own here, but he's not going to go too hard because he's still got plenty of players up in front to defend. And it rolls to the back line to the right of the post. So Azaro taking a bit of a bump from Pepper there, forcing him off his line. So. Dr. Zaro 
not able to clear the ball out from that defensive half and eventually but it gets a bit scrappy in front so argentina get us um, a bit of a let off there and bringing it in from the back line michelle dorignac gets it past thomas collingwood now dorignac up to the halfway line under the neck just picked up by Azaro. His backhand shot. Collingwood turns up for it. But Donovan is back there and he plays the near side backhand for Argentina. So he puts it back into their attacking half. Azaro, they're playing tennis with it here. Backhand to backhand. And now it bounces off the boards and in comes Pepper. And running hard to it now is. Donovan down in front of goal. Can he angle it? Can he pick it off? Pony treads on the ball and knocks it over the back line. So it's actually no, sitting on the it's, line. It's, yeah. it's just sitting on the line, so it hasn't gone across the back line. So it's um, a chance here for Roldan to pick the ball up and get it out of harm's way for the USA. Backhand by Dorignac. Met by Roldan. Now, it's going to be... Well, it's not going to be anybody because the whistle has gone on the ball. Over the boards and a throw in, but they'll take this opportunity to... Looks like it's the end of this fourth chucker. And an opportunity to change ponies. So, not quite the end of the chucker, but we're halfway through. I think the clock was playing tricks with me there. <laughs> the halfway mark halfway mark in this fourth chucker again the players taking this opportunity to change ponies usa with a slender lead over argentina six five so, uh, collingwood that big bump he got there this is aubrey gone then Dorignac. This was typical of that chucker that, that, that brought the game opened up a little bit more and we saw a bit more galloping play. And Mike Azaro, well, he won't be that happy that they've, they've come back to just a goal, the difference having led by 6-3 not so long ago. So a bit of pressure on the USA now to um, try and get their scoring machine going. Again, we mentioned the fifth, the International Polo Federation endorsement of the Super Nations Cup edition. Uh, this is probably the uh, highest, the, the, the most televised polo event in the world, going out to billions, not only on Now Sports, but CCTV and a number of other broadcast entities. Yes, um, when you start picking up audiences in Asia, you start picking up a lot of people. And, uh, and it's, it's uh, out on cable and, um, and some highlights and replays on free-to-air television as well and it's being replayed on the internet on various sites so the ball goes in play to start the last two and a half minutes or three minutes of the uh, fourth chucker a backhand shot there by pepper picked up by obregon he'll take it out towards the sideline now next to it well, i think that might have gone over the sideline so it's a little bit hard with the white boards here at Metropolitan. I'm not to pick up the ball, but it goes in play, and that's uh, Argentina with the first possession, but then stolen back by Thomas Collingwood. And he's got the goal up in front of him, but he's got a lot of blue, light blue shirts to get past first. So in goes Azaro, plays the backhand shot, and he's going to run it up to the goal, and picked up there by Nick Roldan. And that's another goal to the USA, and great team play there. Well, that's a beautiful combination. <laughs> um, Collingwood was in the clear for a little bit, but then got himself in a bit of trouble. He was surrounded by blue shirts, so Mike Azaro saw a, a little gap in the traffic. And you saw it come through there, and he played it forward then fainted for the forehand shot cut the backhand in rolled and saw him do that and he was there and able to bring it out at a mighty angle too to um, so that's a very good goal from the states in this tough sort of play that we've seen we've seen that one great galloping goal well there you see a whistle blow and Mike Azaro not happy with himself I think he knew probably that, that was a little bit of a 
dangerous place to be. He was quickly out of, out of the ruck yeah. and yeah, no, he running. Wasn't, he wasn't arguing about that one. He was uh, angry with himself. When the ball comes through the line out like that, the, the, the line is actually established by the throw in of the umpire. And so Mike Azaro, in cutting across that line, anybody turning up and doing a, a 180 degree turn is actually first onto the line. So Argentina will get a hit on the spot where the ball was thrown in. Michelle Dorignac just teeing it up, but, uh, despite the sterling efforts of the crowd out treading divots at half time. There are a few bumps in the in the ground, so they make sure it's not sitting in one of those. So, one of our attractive Chinese commentators there. So Michelle Dorniak puts his head down and drives and I don't think he's got quite the length he wanted on that. It's given Mike Azaro the chance to pick up, uh, block the ball and pick it up and hit it up to Thomas Collingwood and Collingwood's got away from Dorniak here and Collingwood running in towards goal. He's got an angled shot, he pops it up and he puts it wide to the right. Uh, a bit of a challenge there and that's the difference I suppose between four goals and eight goals really. Well, <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think wasn't getting a lot of help from the horse. Um, so you look here, you see when he hit this one, and then he had to, oh no, the, the horse was running quite flat for him there, so it was just a bit too much angle for him. He put it a bit hard to the right, so Argentina hit in and put it onto the boards. And Mike Gazzaro finds it on the boards, hits it back into centre field, but it's trapped and brought forward here by Obregon, and he jumps the boards. But will he get the next shot in? No, he doesn't. It's Mike Azaro who gets the next shot in. He's put it right on the end of the stick. Oh, Nick roll down. He'll bring it down to about the 60-yard line now. He's got an under the next shot here, but he's got time to come around on to a better angle. Now he runs the ball down to goal. Now he taps it under the neck, and he's missed it too. Well. Too it's a very frightened goal mouth, this one there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're coming down to hit at, but uh, so two big let offs for Argentina there. Um, good chances. Here you go. Just see Nick roll there. He's very, very active. Does the ball bounce a bit awkwardly for him here? No, it's run. Oh, it does pop a little, but he just, uh, well, he didn't really get onto it at all. So, first bell has rung, and uh, he's not happy with himself. So, but you have to forget about that and get on with the next one. So this last third of the game is going to be, well, it's about the same as it's been all through. USA have pretty much been two goals in front most of the way. Indeed, and, and it's unfortunate off the screen, if you could just see the physicality, the, the players riding one another off. Now, obviously, we're focused on the, the ball and the goal mouth, but we're going to take a short break here at the Fortune, Nation, Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup. And we'll return. Super Nations Cup where action has resumed in this fifth chukka. USA leading Argentina 7-5 and from the throw in it's quickly picked up there by Mike Nazaro and taken down to the goal and put through so oh, no, Nick Roll. Nick rolled in just 15 seconds into the fifth chukka. US go ahead 8-5 eight, eight to five against Argentina. So just trying to take command of this game a little bit you see um, here, out of the ruck, Nick Roldan was clear, and this time he made no doubt about it. But again, he wasn't being uh, chased for the ball like he had been in the last couple of efforts. So once now it comes out again on the American side. This time it's Mike Azaro with the ball, and he's got it down inside the 30-yard line. The goal's open. He'll just tap it through, and that will be nine goals now to. Oh, two goals in quick succession. Yeah, well, <laughs> the first two line outs, they, they pinched the ball and taken it through. And I had, like the last time he tried to do that, he got a penalty against him. But this time, no problem at all. And again, Mike Azaro's experience. He knew he was out there and in the lead. And so he just had a little bit of an angle on that. But 
I was able to just drop the stick on it and pop it through. So now there's uh, some pressure on Argentina. They have struggled to score um, goals, even though they've had a lot of attacking opportunities. USA started to get a bit of that problem, but here we have a throw in, and uh, the whistle blows. The players milling around the ball in the line out. And the USA. Argentina really probably just a little bit too keen to get possession. They haven't been able to get it out of the last two lineouts. Tried to do it on this occasion, but the, the USA retaining possession being awarded that penalty. It looks like Thomas Collins was there. I thought we might get a read that in, but uh, it's, it was milling around the ball and one of the Argentinians dived in to hit it because he puts his stick across. So it's just, uh, it's a hit on the spot and Nick Roldan now doesn't get the angle on it this time and it rolls well out to the left of the post. But Argentina still in this chuck of that's three attacking plays by America. The USA in the first couple of minutes. So Michelle Dorignac will hit the ball nice and hard across the goal mouth back in defense there mike azaro he'll push it out to the board see if he can claim a new line now he plays the backhand down along the boards nick grohl down going for it uh, and taxi collingwood i think finally gets there escapite and collingwood down in the corner the shot goes over the back line again the united states really pressing in this chucker Pushing forward at every opportunity. Yes, they've had all of the uh, attacking play so far. Argentina really haven't been in their attacking half once. So what can they do from the back line here? Michelle Dorignac there on the screen to take the hit in from the back line. This time, instead of trying to hit it too hard and giving it away, he's just hit a half shot, now he pops it in the air, but beautifully met there. This man, Nick Roldan, who puts the ball on the ground, brings it out to the boards, backhand there by Escapite. Now Collingwood tries to dig it out, turned around there by Dorignac. He comes to the ball now, so it wasn't him turn around, I was looking at him going to the pass, and uh, he's brought it down to the 40-yard line, to the 30-yard line, to the goal line, and through the goal. So, again, a galloping goal in the run of play. Mike Azaro trying to hook him at the last moment there. Yeah, just see, yeah, well, this was, this was the pass he got, I think, it from Obregon, and the bouncing ball, and, well, that was his second shot, because he was able then to pick up the bouncing ball and get the angle on it. If you've only got to be one horse length clear and you're away from that hook, and that's when the yips sometimes get you the nerves. Argentina closing the gap. It's now in the United States 6. Argent sorry, United States 9. Argentina 6. Again, taking this opportunity to change ponies. Fresh legs on the field for the second half of this fifth chucker. We'll be playing six chuckers in this subsidiary final. Yeah, there's only four minutes to go in this chucker, so Argentina would love to get another couple of goals here. If they could go in either only one goal down or, or all square. Um, here you see the replay of Nick Roldan's angled shot. through the goal so we'll come back into center field we'll throw the ball in and stolen there by Escapita I think it is it's, uh, Argentina going back and then again Mike Azaro with the ball for USA and he's brought it down in front of goal he's got a cut backhand from there doesn't get any length on it so in comes Dorignac Dorignac is hard ridden Bias can beat day. Tom Collingwood hits a backhand shot up to Nick Roldan. Roldan just, he's got three Argentine shirts around him there. 
And so he leaves the ball. Collingwood's pony doesn't let him stop in time. So Mike Azaro hits it. Collingwood plays on the near side. Tapped out towards the back line there by Obregon. Now he plays the ball out towards the sideline. And uh, he just takes it off the boards. It's turned around by Nick Roldan. It's running in towards the goal. Mike Azaro and Martin Donovan go. Oh, great save by Donovan. He had the, the post coming up, but he still got the backhand in. Tucked in there by Escapite. In comes Collingwood. Can't get the pony to the ball. So Dorignac, desperate defence here by Argentina. They're just stuck on the goal line. Roldan. Roldan runs it towards the goal and puts it through, and so that's pushed them out to a four-goal lead again. That's what uh, Argentina didn't want to see in the second part of this fifth chucker. So there's the offside backhand from Roldan. And, uh, you see the ball rolled out there now. Here's Roldan with the backhand shot under the pony's feet of the Argentinian players and puts it through the goal. So they're into double figures now. Argentina six. So they need at least a couple of goals this chucker to have any real chance of coming into the final chucker. Well, the sixth. So doing his best to do something about it. And uh, it's turned around though by Escapite and it goes over the sideline. Clock counting down in this fifth chucker, the USA with a four goal lead. So this time off the back of the ruck, but Mike Azara doesn't try and hit it. He bumps uh, the player off the ball and leaves it there for Nick Roldan now to bring the ball down to about the 60 yard line, running it up towards goals. A couple of Argentine shirts in defense, but he's done it again, Nick Roldan. Just to the left there, just to the left of the goal mouth. So. He's, uh, well, I think he's had three or four shots at goal here. And that, but look again, I said they're under pressure. You see, he's, he knows he can't come in any closer than that because there's a man there that can take him out of the next play. So he has to play the shot where it is, and he just rushes a little bit. And uh, So it's hit in from the back line now and uh, goes over the side. Uh, screams of frustration there. <laughs> the Argentinian team. Yes, they don't have any time to be waiting for the ball to be thrown in. They'd like to be down there in front of goal. So and the clock does continue to run. So Escobite out of the out of the line out now. Brings it down for Donovan. Now the, There's been a whistle, even though that ball has rolled through the goal. So you saw Obregon got the ball going. He um, took it away from Escapita and then hit it down to Donovan. And again, we're sitting right side on to that one, so hard to read the angles. But by the look of it, it is a penalty that has been awarded to Argentina. 40-yard mark. Indeed, Stevie Evans lining up the lining up the ball for Michelle Dorian. Uh, it's actually Obregon, I think, who took the hit, so it goes through the goal from the 30-yard line and Argentina back into this a little bit. Ten goals to seven. There's still uh, half a minute to go, so they'll waste no time getting back to centre field. You just see. Here he is walking the pony in and just not wasting any energy and not trying to do too much with it, knocking it off the line. So out of the line out now, it's USA in possession. Mike Azaro trying to bring the ball around the corner, but there's plenty of Argentine sticks in there trying to stop him. But finally, his experience shows he doesn't try and hit it hard first, drags it out. He's hit a lovely pass for Nick Roldown. The first bell's gone, so there's only about 24 seconds left in the chuck, and Nick Roldown on the bouncing ball beats him. But in comes Escapite and, uh, what was it, Tom Collingwood, I think. Yes, it was. And so... Just sitting up there in front, and nice play by Nick Roldan. But you watch the ball here pop over his stick, and in comes Collingwood. Collingwood came yeah. off the legs of his, his pony. Yeah. So anyway, they don't care how it goes through as long as it's a goal. So 11 goals to seven the score, USA in the lead over Argentina. 
So we were going to take a short break and return for the final chukka here of this subsidiary final, USA versus Argentina. Well, from the throw in, the ball has come down into the USA half, but it's gone over the sideline, so just with a few seconds into the chucker, we'll see the throw in from the side, and it comes out of USA in possession. Leading out, playing it forward now, Mike Cazaro. It's going to be on the end of the path there from Nick Roldan. Now it's gone down to the corner, Roldan has to play the angled shot, goes way wide high in the air goal judge taking a second look at that <laughs> ensuring that he made the right call from that angle and the height of the ball so argentina wasting no time getting back in play here now michelle dorignac hits the ball up to pepper and it's a backhand there by Nick Roldan. And once again, we see it head off into the spectators. So just uh, hopefully everyone's paying attention to the game. Yep. No, no, it's uh, too busy with the champagne. So umpire Steve Evans puts it in. It comes around the back again. Donovan gets a stick to the ball, picked up by Obrigo. Uh, no, it's Martin Pepper actually who's got the ball here now, so he doesn't get the next shot in, but he turns and gets the backhand, and in comes Martin Donovan, and he hits it across to Martin Pepper. Looks like they might be going in the wrong direction, but that's given them a bit of clear air out the back here, and so Donovan has got a new angle. He'll tap the ball around. He'll just try and beat the hook. He does so. Doesn't clean up the next one. Aubrey goes in there. Stolen by Nick Rolder. He puts a little backhand in the air now taken forward by Escapite down in front of goal and Collingwood has hooked out of the play so cleared away now by Martin Pepper but Mike Azaro has seen that coming and he'll push it out to the boards just try and clean it up there takes it on the near side takes it on the offside Pepper's in there with him but here goes Mike Azaro now trying to run it back down to goal turned around there by uh, Dorignac Backhand runs into traffic, so Collingwood hits a backhand. Umpires have blown the whistle. Looks like that will be called against Collingwood for crossing the path of Mariano Obregón. Younger spectators there, a little trophy from that last ball that was hit into the audience. Uh, that's something for her to take home as a memory of the Super Nations Cup. So the ball going back to the halfway line for a penalty 5B. Argentina with a chance to go down into the scoring zone. It's a bit of a breeze here, so taking a chance on hitting the goal from the halfway. I've seen it done, but usually on a very still day. This is quite breezy up there, so if you put the ball up in the air, it's probably going to be blown offline. So will the Argentinians take the cautious approach and try and bring the ball up the field or is Michel Dorignac going to have a whack at it he's gone back nice and deep so he may decide to unload he does and he's hit a shot right into Mike Azaro's pony so Azaro gets possession for the USA and um, Argentina just no luck going their way at the moment and uh, down into the corner it goes Nick Roldan's there once again to pick up that Azaro pass they do that so well the two of them Roldan trying to bring the ball in, picks it up on the half volley, swings the stick over. It's running in towards goal. It's going to go right, but picked up there by Collingwood once again. He's the man of the moment in the one position. And so USA push even further in front now. 12 goals to seven in Argentina. Really, time is running out for us. Well, five goal deficit for Argentina at this halfway mark in the sixth and final chucker. There's a replay of the... Collingwood was in the perfect number one position. He's got away from the opposition. 
He's got the pony going steadily on the right foot and he just has a nice angled shot to put it through the goal. So there you see it from the other side and he, not, not even a really big angle from there, it was, um, it was great play, beautiful approach shot. Players will now take a short break again to change ponies at the halfway point of the sixth chucker. And, uh, that last uh, goal and, and the, the one previous from Mike Azaro is really evident. I know that people draw parallels to polo and, and golf to some extent where you see them just keeping their heads still and down and swinging the, the mallet like a pendulum. We have a little bit of the replay. Well, this was the clever shot by... Well, I thought that was the one he was going to put in the goal, not the one he missed, so... <laughs> we won't talk too much about that. So. And there's the frustration <laughs> on the yeah, Argentinian uh, look. Uh, so, oh, no, not again. You can hear them. That was uh, Obrigon, where he came to, and that's, I think that's, uh, that's where he got fouled. You can really see the power of these ponies. Yeah, Nick Roller has had a very strong game but today. He's probably played as well as a veteran than he did on Friday, I think, or on Monday, Tuesday, whatever it was. We're smiling back at you, young lady. <laughs> Not quite over. She's holding up the victory sign, I suppose, a bit prematurely for the United States. So umpire Peter Wright puts the ball in and it goes, uh, gets caught up amongst the number threes. And Mike Azaro leaves it there now for Nick Roll now. He'll drive the ball down the field. That's bouncing straight up in the scoring zone. Collingwood's done. No, he hasn't, because that's a beautiful save by uh, Donovan. But then Mike Azaro just travelling down the line, following through. That was Azaro, but yep. we have to get credit to his pony, Beetle, yep. for this. <laughs> I think we so, have to give credit to Beetle Colin for that one. Lovely backhand by Don. Oh, no, 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 no. Mike yeah. Azaro did get a, a stick to the ball in midair. Just tapped it down like a baseball bunt. And uh, look at this. It's just amazing hand-eye coordination. Yep. There he goes, bang, through the goal. So, well, that's two of the most unusual plays we've seen in a while. The one just uh, the other day with the, the header. Now, from the throw, and it goes across to the sideline, and as it was going to the boards, the umpires have blown the whistle. So 13 to 7, the score in favour of USA. Just three minutes left. Again, I think it is a bit premature, but I think the writing is, is on the wall in the United States here. And they've been fairly dominant in these last two chuckers. You'd have to love having a bet to put one on Argentina at the moment, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. So... And, oh, look, Dorignac shot there. Now, I don't think Escapito was trying to block that ball. It just, he happened to be in the position where Dorignac shot ran hit into his pony. That gave him a chance to go through and get the backhand. And back comes Obregor, and the umpires blow the whistle. So it looks like they've so blown that on Mike Azaro. Here it... So, I'm going to get a replay there, I don't think so. So you see Obregon coming back there now to play. Here it was, you see Collingwood down. Now Mike Azaro goes down on the near side and the umpires have blown it and given Argentina the hit. So this is now taken in by Dorinac, a nice lofted shot. Roldan nearly tips himself out of the saddle coming through there, digging hard for it as Obregon and then Pepe, but it's turned around by the USA and so back in defence once again. Michelle Dorinac has to go and he hits it up now looking for Obregon. Obregon's there, he's taken the ball now, tight play in the ruck, got it on the stick side. Great stick work, goes on the near side, can't get the shot. So it's Donovan who's come through from the back. Donovan now gets another shot at it. Picked up now by Dorignac. Dorignac's and the USA defence has been superb in closing these Argentinian. They're great stick men, big hitters, but eventually the umpire blows the whistle. So. And again, well, the, the players are just jockeying for position. The ball's actually not in motion. No. So 
there are some rules about how long you can stand there. Um, there are some rules about whether you can still come in to the right of way, even when the ball is stationary. So I think um, in that case, the ball had stopped, but the player who'd come up the line was still there swinging at the ball. So he gets a free hit, he puts it through the goal. And so Argentina up to nine goals now with still uh, nearly two minutes to go in this chunk. Probably well two minutes 20 if we took the extra 30 seconds in, so. Argentinian players hastily up the field as the clock continues to run. So USA in possession, but uh, it's stolen here by Donovan, who'll bring the ball down to about the 60-yard line, now tries to bring it into centre field. He's got a uh, bit of an angled shot from here, but he's hit it up in front of goal. Had he got time to get to the ball? Backhand there by Mike Azzaro, helped on its way by Nick Roldan. Coming out of the ruck is Thomas Collingwood. Collingwood takes the ball almost to the halfway line, now leans over and he tries to straighten it up. Back in the fence is Pepe. He stops the ball. Dorinyak comes in to take it around the corner if he can. Roldan goes to hook him, but uh, not successful. So Dorinyak is able to, oh, great loft and drive by Michelle Dorinyak. He's looking, well, he's got number four, Martin Donovan has come out there, but back in defence, Escapite will take the ball way out in the corner. They don't have to do anything now except stop Argentina scoring. And that's the place to be, out in the corner. So, Pizarro trying to dig it out. But uh, eventually it's Pepe gets hold of it, doesn't get the next shot in, but uh, Dorinyak does. Dorinyak's shot is met there by Escapite, turns the near side backhand around. Collingwood's going to run to the ball now. He gets it up to the halfway line. He'll get the next shot in too because Mike Nazaro's taken the Argentinian defence out of the way. Dorinyak. Dorinyak taps the ball, but there goes the siren, and that'll be the end of the sixth chucker. And congratulations to the USA. They have done a very good job to push this out to 13 goals, and Argentina, well, I think... Story, the the luck really didn't go with Argentina they do I mean the number of times they they hit the right shot and they just happened to be a horse in the way or I saw a couple of times where the pony kicked the ball in one of those tight plays so uh, but a very good exhibition by the USA and, and I think probably the tactics that they employed by opening it up in the center and giving Collingwood to saw a lot of the ball exactly we saw more of Thomas Collingwood and Ulysses Escapite today uh, whereas in the semi-final there was very much a, a Zara roll down combination um, but this time obviously they were assuming that Argentina would be marking the two of them and they released the two younger players Ulysses, Ulysses Escapite and Thomas Collingwood both at four goals and the end result was evident 13 to 8 in the favor of the USA yeah um, similar situation too USA getting out to a good lead by half time, but this time they hung on to it instead of letting the other team get back in in the second half. And so uh, a good win. They'll be happy with that. Even though they're not going to win the Super Nations Cup, they're going away with a win and a loss. So that's not, not all bad. They are indeed. So the USA claiming third position in this uh, four team, 24 goal Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup. USA victorious against Argentina, 13 to eight, while we invite everyone back on field to stomp divots and to celebrate the USA victory. Tomorrow we have uh, the final, the grand finale, England versus the home team, the home expatriate team of Hong Kong, China, that will play in the, uh, the final. And we've got some highlights of that, uh, that subsidiary final.
And there you have the Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup 2013, an indication of the draw. Subsidiary final with the USA victorious against Argentina, 13-8. Tomorrow's final, again, England versus Hong Kong, China. A bit of a family affair. Brothers Henry and John Fisher. And, of course, two brothers playing in the England team, the Tomlinson brothers. So it's a, a filial affair. Indeed, indeed. Again, a shot, a shot of this uh, beautiful Metropolitan Polo Club. There's indication of our final tomorrow. We'll be going live at 2.05 p.m. England versus Hong Kong, China. Again, 24-goal polo in Asia. Uh, highest uh, handicap tournament in Asia. Credit to the Metropolitan Polo Club and Gokun Properties for the success to date. So we've got uh, some of our younger <laughs> enthusiasts, polo enthusiasts. We're starting them young here in China. It's good to see. So um, the more people we can get involved in this sport here, they've got the facility certainly at uh, this uh, club and a number of other clubs in China. Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow.